Now we're ready to go ahead and start coding up our Razor page. So the first thing we're going to do is add in a few namespaces. We've got our contact model and just below that we're going to bring in a using to make a reference to Razor pages. So we're going to have Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC and Razor pages. We also need a using for MIME kit. That's the package that we added earlier. So it's going to be using you may not get any IntelliSense on this, but that is what it will look like. And then we're going to have another for mail kit. So another using here, and it's going to be mail kit and net. Then we'll have SMTP because we're sending. So we only need to worry about SMTP. And while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and add our tag helpers. So tag helper, and it's going to be what we saw earlier, which is going to go to Microsoft and no IntelliSense on this one. Net Core MVC tag helpers. And we're going to add a functions section because that doesn't come by default. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is mimic this model by building out a class which is going to contain our code. So we're going to have a class called contact model, and this needs to inherit from page model. Okay, so we're going to uh, put in our on get, and we're also going to add a method called on post. And we're adding post to capture the post that is sent back. And we're going to have as well a property called posted message, which is just going to tell the user that, you know, thank you for submitting your form, something to that effect, so that they can actually tell that something did happen with the submission. So we're going to go ahead and create those. We're going to have a public string on our property. So posted message. This is just going to be a get and a set. And we can, if we want, just go ahead and initialize it. We're going to create our on post async now. So we'll start that off with an async. So asynchronous. And we're going to have an I action result. So you're probably familiar with those from uh, ASP.NET MVC applications. And this method is on post async, and nothing's coming into it. And in here, what we're going to do is return back, because we need a return, and we're going to redirect to our get, which means this is how we're going to do it, and semicolon. All right, and then we're going to create our on get, so public void on get int id. We can take our property, which was posted message, and assign it. So your message has been sent. Now there's another way that this can also be done, and we're going to see that, which is to use view data. And in view data, we can do a posted message. So what I'm going to do so we can tell which is which is we're just going to put in brackets property. And then over here, we can just go ahead and do something like this, and we'll put view data. And down here, I'm going to put my semicolon. You'll notice we have another view data in this basically global section here. So that's where we're making use of this view data. And you can see right here, now we've brought in the model. So this model right here does not have a message to work with. So what we're going to do is just remove it and what we can put in here is model posted message. So once we bring in our own class and start customizing this model, we have to be cognizant of changes, cascading changes like we saw with that message that uh, can happen throughout the rest of the page. So now what we can do inside of this class is go ahead and create a method for sending mail. And we're just going to contain all of that inside of one method. And we'll call it send mail. So the first part of this is going to be to create a my message. So build up the actual message with the from, the to, the subject, and the body. And we're going to create a variable called message, which is of type mime message. And in message, we can start now adding in the other parts. This is message, 
we'll have a from, and then we're going to use an add to start adding the parts to this. So for the from, we need a new mailbox address to make that happen. So I'm gonna do new mailbox address. And then in here, you can do who you're from. So I can just say John Doe, and then put in some email. So let's do test at tester.com or something like that. You can put in a valid email, that way when you get it, you can actually just reply to it and make sure the full loop will work. And so now we're going to do our two. So we'll have a two, we'll use the same add, and in here we're going to do a new mailbox address again. And this is going to work the same way. So who's it coming from? Or sorry, who is it going to? So this is going to me and to my Gmail. So I am just going to put user at, and this needs to be in quotes, user at gmail.com, and I'll change that out when we get into using uh, or testing the application. So now we're going into the subject, and for that we're just going to do a direct assignment, testing from app. And finally, we need a body on this. So message dot body. This is also going to be an assignment, but this is an object, and we're going to create new text part. So new text part, and we're going to do a plane. So this requires a body on it, not a message body, but a body to this object that we've created. So we're going to have a property called text, which we can just assign hello world from app. And then we'll put a semicolon here. All right, so the next part of this is going to be creating the SMTP client. So this is where our connection comes in, putting in our username and password, sending it, and then we need to disconnect as well. So I am going to start with our using statement here for our client that we're creating. This is going to be new SMTP or SMTP client. All right, and so in here, we can go ahead and start with the little bit of workflow that goes on. So there's a connection, and this is general for Google, so you can use this these settings here. We have smtpgmail.com. This is gonna go on port 587, and we're going to do a false here, and that is just for using SSL for the false. All right, and then we have client authenticate. This is gonna be username and password for your Gmail account. And again, I'll change those out once we start sending anything. Then we're gonna have client send, take our message and drop it in there. So the one we created up here. And then we're going to disconnect the session. We want to do a true on that. And that true is, is just a quit parameter. So just making sure that it's all disconnected. And at this point, we want to make sure we're good at runtime. And if we are, we'll come back and we're going to start building our form inside of the view. All right, so I'll click contact. And yep, yeah, so that's good at runtime. Now we are going to go ahead and stop and we'll come back. And then down here, we'll add in our form using tag helpers.